this region, this non-rectangular region, into many small, finite rectangular pieces. I'm an artificial intelligence right? researcher at the Morales Lab. And uh, today we're going to check out an application of double integrals. So in the last few lectures, you saw how to compute double integrals on rectangular, non-rectangular, and polar regions. Today we're going to check out how to evaluate an application of double integrals, which is how to find the total amount of charge on a non-rectangular uh, surface. So um, we're going to have a certain density function, and that density function in this example is going to be x, y. But you can have any uh, three-dimensional density function you want. And that density function is going to be evaluated over some two-dimensional region on the xy plane. So when we do that, when we find the total amount of volume under our density function, we're going to get the, the total amount of charge on our two-dimensional region. Uh, so as I'm driving over to my lab, you're going to find there's a bunch of Christmas decorations taking place. If you look to your left, you're going to see uh, Santa, the Christmas trees, and uh, reindeers. Um, and it's, it's pretty amazing. So uh, go ahead and uh, you can set your own Christmas decorations. But for now, we're going to be solving a Calc 3 problem. All right, folks. So today we're going to check out an application of double integrals. And so here's the problem we have today. Find the total charge, total charge C on the region R given by the following density function. Okay, so your density is equal to x times y. Uh, so the higher your x and y coordinates, the greater your density and thus your mass. So here's the region we're given for the problem. The region is some kind of triangular region and it's bounded by the following functions. y is equal to 1 minus x, y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 1. Okay, so we're trying to find the total charge over this triangular region and under our density function. So what does that look like? So I'm going to sketch out the 3D XYZ plane. And on this plane, we have a certain surface, right? And what is that surface? That's our density is equal to XY. So I have no idea how this surface looks like, but it's some kind of a three-dimensional surface dependent on both your x and y coordinates. So here's your 3D surface f of xy, and we have some 2D planar region on the xy plane, and that planar region is this triangle, right? So we're gonna have this triangle on our planar region. Okay, you can draw it however orientation you want, but the key idea is the same. What we're gonna do with this region is we're going to extrude it upwards parallel to the z-axis and you're going to get some kind of a curve on your surface. Here's your curve and what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the volume under this curve. Okay, So we're trying to find the volume under this curve and that volume is going to be the total amount of charge on this surface. Okay, So that's the key idea. We have a density function we're integrating over some kind of a, a region that we want to find the total charge over. To find the total charge on this surface, we have to find the volume under the density function and over this region. Okay, so now that we have the key idea in place, let's go ahead and sketch out how we're gonna find the total charge. So here, if we come over here, we know that our density function is xy, and we know what our region looks like. It's some triangular region. So what are we really trying to do here? So if I take a look at the at some kind of uh, two-dimensional region that I want to find the total charge over, let's say I want to find the total charge on this kind of totally non-rectangular region. What can I do? Well, the first thing I'm going to do is, of course, partition this this region, this non-rectangular region, into many small, finite rectangular pieces. Right? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just slice it out. And then for each of these slices, each one of these slices is going to have a certain density, right? Remember that density is mass over volume. But in this case, we're not talking about that kind of density, right? We're talking about the charge density, coulombs per square meter. So instead of mass, we're going to have charge. And instead of volume, let's say we have area. 
Okay, so now what are we gonna have? To find the total amount of charge, I'm just gonna have to multiply both sides by the area. And so the total charge is given by the density times the area of my little piece. So for example, if I wanna find the density of this little piece over here, what am I gonna do? Let's say this little piece has a width of dx and a height of dy. Okay, how am I gonna find the total charge on that piece? What I'm gonna do is the following. I know that charge is equal to density times my little area. And in, in fact, I can call this d charge, right? For a small amount of charge, a small element of charge. Well, instead of dA, I can just write dx times dy because that's the area of my little region. So I can write dx dy. And so that is what my small element of charge is going to be. If I integrate both sides with respect to x and y, what is my final answer going to be? I'm going to have my charge is equal to the double integral of x and y, right? Uh, of the density function dx dy. Okay, so now let's put this into practice on our whiteboard. Okay, so we have the following. We have my density function is x, y, and my region looks something like something like this, right? We have x is equal to one, y is equal to one, and y is equal to one minus x. And we wanna find the, the total charge over this region. And to do so, we have to use the density function. So you just saw that the total charge is given by this double integral of the density function over our little area, right? So what are we gonna have? The total charge is the double integral over the dens under the density function and over our little area. You can do dy dx or dx dy, doesn't matter. But remember, because this is a non-rectangular region, um, you have to think twice before just switching the bounds. So let's go ahead and apply our limits of integration here. What are the limits of integration for x first? Well, x is going from this, okay, so x is going from this origin all the way to this intersection point. So it's going from zero all the way to x is equal to one. So the limits of integration for my x coordinate is gonna be between zero and one, and the limits of integration for my y coordinate is gonna be what? Well, the lower limit of integration is gonna be the first function I hit, and the first function I hit is one minus x. The second function I hit is gonna be y equals one. So these are the limits of integration for y, these are the limits of integration for x. Now we can resume calculating our integral. So we're gonna have the double integral. What are the bounds for our x variable, since that's the outer integral? It's gonna be between zero and one. And the limits of integration for our y variable, that's the inner integral, is gonna be from one minus x to one. And what is this little density element? That's just gonna be x, y, right? And then we just do dy, dx. Now we can just start integrating as normal. This inner integral is with respect to y. So I'm gonna hold x constant, right? Imagine I'm taking a cross section. I'm taking a cross section parallel along, along the x-axis. So that's what it means when I'm holding x constant and taking the integration with respect to y. So I'm gonna have from zero to one of half x y squared from y is equal to x minus one minus x to y is equal to one dx. So what am I gonna have here? It's gonna be what? If I take this little constant outside, I'll have half is equal to x times, instead of y, I'll have, yes, instead of y, I'm gonna have one squared minus one minus x squared uh, dx. So here I'm gonna have half times the integral from zero to one of x times one minus x minus one squared. That's just gonna give me x squared minus two x plus one. Okay, dx. Let's finish this off. We have half of the integral from zero to one, zero to one of x times, what is this gonna be? It's gonna be x minus x squared plus two x minus one. This one and this one cancels out. We're left with two x minus x squared. Okay, so let's settle this over here. Half of the integral from zero to x of x times two x minus x squared dx. So what is this gonna be? That's gonna be half of the integral from zero to one I have 2x squared minus x cubed dx. Hopefully that's correct. Now all we have to do is just basic integration. Let's do that on this side. We're gonna have two cubed x cubed minus one fourth x to the fourth. 
All of this multiplied by, don't forget the half. Okay, let's check we did this correctly. 2 over 3x cubed and 1 over 4x to the 4. So if I go ahead and evaluate this from 0 to 1, what am I going to get? I'll get 2 cubed minus 1 fourth times a half. You can forget about the 0. That's just going to give you 0. So what, do, what will I have? 3 times 4 is 12. 2 times 4 is 8. And this is going to be 3 twelfths times 1 over 2. That's 5 over 12 times 1 half is going to give me a final answer of 5 over 24 coulombs. That's how much charge is on our triangular element. Okay, folks, thanks for watching this episode of Calc 3 with Refund Barry. If you want to keep supporting us, head over to brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab. We'll check you out in the next episode. The ambition plus MKO plus scaffolding equals oh, learning. We believe anyone can learn anything. That's why our motto is memorization is a crime. And that's why we partnered with Brilliant. Brilliant transforms math and science into hands-on activities so that you too can understand everything from first grade math to E equals MC squared. Barry Science Lab and Brilliant is your MKO and will give you the scaffolding to expand your ZPD until you become the next Sir Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein. Visit brilliant.org slash Barry Science Lab today. And the first 50 of you to use that link will get a 20% discount on the Brilliant annual subscription. Don't, Don't forget, forget that, that you too can, can become, become the, the next Einstein. Einstein. So, so let's, let's fall in love, love with math and science. science.